The first time I went fishing with my buddy, Jake, I saw that he had a sticker on his boat that says, No Bananas. So I asked him about it. He said that bananas are bad luck when you are fishing. Sometimes the bad luck is not catching any fish. Sometimes it's mechanical breakdowns. Sometimes it's bad weather. He explained some people think it's a myth. Some people swear it's true. As for Jake, he has said he has had enough bad luck with bananas. And he isn't going to take any chances. We got to talking about it again last fall, and he suggested I turn it into a science experiment. Here's my dad to explain the background. Though the legend may sound a little odd, there are a few theories on how it came to be and some possible explanations on why it may have merit. The idea seems to date back as far as the 1700s when bananas became cargo. Bananas float, so if a ship sank, not much more than the bananas would be left floating on the surface. It didn't take long for sailors to begin correlating bananas with shipwrecks. One theory is that because bananas ripened quickly, they needed to be on the fastest boats in transit. Crew trying to troll for fish didn't catch much because the boat was moving too fast. Those are examples of correlation being confused with causation. Yes, bananas made shipwrecks easier to identify. And yes, banana boats sailed faster than good trolling speeds. But that doesn't mean bananas caused the bad luck. Still, some theories do suspect bananas play a role in bad luck. Some think that the oils and smell of bananas spook the fish. This would come from the banana getting on your hands and then on the lure or the bait. Some say that bananas attract pests that cause trouble. Still, others cite that bananas give off ethylene gas when ripening, which increased spoilage of other food in the cargo hold, or even resulted in fermentation and alcohol being produced, which caused fires on board. And some simply say the slippery banana peels or sticky fruit just cause problems. Armed with a little history, we loaded up our tackle and hit the lake in search of answers. Are bananas bad luck when fishing? A science experiment starts with a hypothesis, a prediction of what you think will happen. My prediction was that the legend about bananas was true and that having one with you is in fact bad luck. I base this prediction off my past experience, namely that Jake helped me catch this big old fish so that I figure he knows what he's talking about. To test my hypothesis, I had to design an experiment. Of course, I would need data, and to get the data, I would have to go fishing. This may look like I am just out there at the lake having fun, but this is serious schoolwork going on. Each time I went fishing, I mean each time I was collecting data, I spent part of the time fishing with a banana in my tackle box and part of the time without a banana. We kept a record of how much time we fished each way, how many fish we caught, and the size of each fish. We also noted whether the banana was present on the first or second half of each trip. There are lots of other variables at play when fishing. And I mean lots. Many of them are not in our control and could change throughout the fishing excursion. So we decided the best approach was to use BAFT at all times. BAFT is something we made up because it sounds sciencey. But it does have a legitimate purpose and reasoning behind it. It stands for Best Available Fishing Tactics. The idea is simple. Always try our best to catch fish, and since our desire to catch fish far outweighed any bias we might have about the results, we felt BAFT was the best way to minimize the effects of all the other variables. I also decided to crowdsource some help. 
Dad posted on Facebook asking other anglers to participate and submit their results using a Google form. This gave us more data from more places for more skill levels of anglers. I went fishing 10 times about over the span of a month. Eight other anglers generously participated in this experiment and submitted survey results. That gave us a total of 18 data trials. The raw data looks like this. Here you can see if they had the banana on the first or second part of the trip. These three columns are for fishing or data for fishing with the banana. For each trial, we recorded how many minutes they were fishing, how many fish they caught, and the length of all the fish they caught. The last three columns show the data without the banana. Even though we kept the experiment simple, you are about to see there are a lot of ways to look at this small amount of data. I definitely use my dad's help to analyze it all because he has more experience with analysis. But I'm still a better fisherman than he is. And now the moment you've been waiting for. Total number of fish caught with a banana, 40. Total number of fish caught without the banana, 62. <laughs> Winner! Bananas are bad luck! But wait a minute. The time spent with and without a banana wasn't equal. So we need to adjust for that. With a banana was 40 fish over 1,420 minutes for a rate of catching one fish every 35.5 minutes. Without a banana was 62 fish over 1,200 minutes for a rate of a fish every 19.4 minutes. The winner is... Bananas are bad luck. But wait, you may be thinking, what about the size of the fish? Which way caught the bigger fish? With a banana, the average fish length was 22.8 centimeters, or 9 inches. Without a banana, the average fish length was 23.4 centimeters, or 9.2 inches. So not only did the no banana condition catch fish at a faster rate, it caught bigger fish too. This can be seen by the metric of centimeters of fish caught per hour. With a banana, there were 36.2 centimeters of fish caught per hour. Without a banana, there was 67.8 centimeters of fish caught per hour. That is almost double the rate without a banana. The winner is bananas are bad luck. It was starting to sound pretty conclusive, but something else in the data stood out to us. Everybody in the survey fished with the banana in the first half of their trip, which makes sense. It's a lot easier to throw a banana out midway through a trip than to go back and get one. And only half our own trials had a banana in the second half of the trip. That means out of a total of 18 trials, only five had a banana on the second half of the trip. We also felt like we tended to catch more fish in the last half of our trip because sometimes it took us a while to find the fish or find what they were biting. So we took a closer look it only trials where bananas were present in the second half of the trip to see if they still look like bad luck. In those trials, the with the banana condition caught fish at a faster rate and averaged much bigger fish. Our key metric of centimeters of fish caught per hour showed an advantage of 32.6 versus 12.9 in favor of with the banana. That's a factor of 2.5.
If we look at just the 13 trials where there was no banana in the second half, the numbers are 83.7 versus 37, a factor of 2.3. Both of those breakdowns show a clear advantage for the second half of a trip versus the first half of a trip. So we decided to ignore all the banana part and just look solely at the results by first half and by second half. The fishing was better in the second half by a significant margin. In the key metric of centimeters of fish caught per hour, the second half outperformed the first half by 72.9 to 32.5. Initially, it appeared that the data supported the idea that bananas are bad luck. Closer analysis revealed that the results were being skewed by another factor, namely that in the trials, the second half of fishing was better regardless of the banana. I made the following conclusions. Fishing trips normally have better results in the last part than the first part. We did not find convincing evidence that supported my hypothesis. I don't like bananas anyway. So I'm on Team Jake. I'm not going to risk it. And finally, more data is always better. So I'm going fishing. <laughs> Thanks to everyone who helped me and see you next time.